Hello everyone, my name is Sara Gamarro. I am an Italian soprano and an opera coach specialized in teaching the prosody, diction and interpretation of Italian opera. I am as well the author of the first native Italian manual, Cantare Italiano, which came out in Italian last May and is, as we speak, being translated by Sir Michael Aspinall and will come out in its English version in a couple of months. This special, what you are about to watch, is a tutorial, let's say, and an introduction to the matter that I teach, to Italian diction for singing. People who come to me for the first time usually spend their whole first coaching uh, mastering these things I am about to say, so this uh, is kind of an advantage I'm giving you, because it is the prime matter that every singer has to master before they can approach Italian Opera. The theory that I introduce in my Cantare Italiano is the circularity of the seven Italian vowels. We have only five written in the Italian alphabet, but that is a lack that is due to the fact that when Italy was united, uh, people all around Italy spoke very different languages, and in all those speeches, the vowels were pronounced in a very different way. So we have just one grapheme for the vowel uh, E and one grapheme for the vowel O. We know that they can be either opened or closed and that depends on their etymology, on their derivation from Latin mainly and from the fact that in Latin they used to be long or short vowels. So we have only five written vowels but they in fact correspond to seven audible sounds. For the first time in my book, in my Cantare Italiano, I have offered to my students and to all of the readers the theory that Italian vowels are circular, that they start from a point that, as in every alphabet, in every culture, must be the big mother A, uh, the Aleph, the Alpha, which is represented as, you know, a sort of a triangle because it represents an open mouth. It's the first sound we make when we open our mouth to cry when we're born. And so starting from that A, uh, we see that if we order the Italian vowels in a slightly different way than they are put in the Italian alphabet, they make perfect sense and they come in a perfectly circular order that starting from the mother A uh, brings them back to the mother A. Uh. Being able to perfectly master and to really understand the sound of these seven volumes that are still and perfect is crucial to master the Italian fraseggio, what internationally musicians call legato. Legato means that one sound is connected to the other thanks to the overtones that it has and to the fact that its peculiar vibrations, that its vibrato, that it's uh, the halo that surrounds it, melts together with the halo of the uh, sounds that come uh, after and before it. These seven pure volumes that are the Italian vowels are shaped in a way that when the vocal uh, flux goes through them, they shine and they produce a halo that perfectly melts them with one another. They have to perfectly shine in order to obtain that Milky Way effect, which is the legato. As I was saying, they are just seven. Starting from Mother A, I love to represent them in a circle. This is how I like to write them down. So, Big Mother A, two derivations of a, uh, which I write and advise to write in my book by permitting them, by putting before them an a, uh, a uh, and a, uh, because they keep exactly the same placement, the same width and the same luminosity of the a. Uh, uh, have a base in A. So this is a, a northern hemisphere, okay, 
of the light when there's sun here, there's night here. So the ones of the lower hemisphere are, so the grapheme A, okay, the grapheme of the E connects the open A to the closed A. Ay, ay, ay. The grapheme O connects the open A to the closed O. O, O, O. And then O and U are, st are sisters in a lot of language. In order to write U, you have to use two O's or an O-U uh, spelling. So they're very, very, very close vowels. O, 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 O. U and I are sisters again. O and E are sisters again because in French, in German, E, U, they are very similar to vowel E. In fact, they can hardly be considered two different vowels, these two. Let's pretend that they stand in the, in the, same, uh, um, in the same placement as opposites of the A. So this is the most luminous, this is the deepest, this is the widest, this is the narrowest position. And then E and A again are sisters in... Um, if you analyze words coming from a closed languages, closed be, closed be it in space or in time, you will see that they, uh, in the etymology, in the etymology of words, they are always interchangeable. So th this is how they are connected. And if we start from one, uh, actually, if we start from whichever we want to pick, we will see that going either clockwise or counterclockwise, we always go back circularly to an initial point. I'll do it again. So white vowels, luminous vowels, are closed vowels, deep vowels. So we have the northern hemisphere, the southern hemisphere, the chiaro and the scuro. A lot of singers, even Italian singers, don't know the difference, cannot hear correctly the difference between these two vowels or these two vowels or these two vowels or these two vowels. In fact, those seven volumes are very different one from another and mastering them and mastering this circle is the very first imprescindible step to sing Italian opera. If you really nail the diction, they are so well placed by the librettist together with the composer in the score that they make singing that score absolutely consequential. One of the um, what most common mistakes that sing singers make is that whenever they are opening or closing, if they come from other language that deal with vowels in a different way, with vowels that have different uh, other placements, it will make us hear their process of opening and closing the vowels. So we'll have a lot of that will give the typical chewed legato, manipulated legato that is typical of non-Italian singers. So that is why we have to make sure that we completely master and own those seven little guys back there and that we never manipulate them muscularly with our tongue, with our throat muscles, with our mouth muscles, with our lips, absolutely forbidden, in order not to um, soil our legato, not to um, interfere with that blessed and calm vocal line that is typical of the Italian prosody and diction. I promise you it is going to be life-changing vocally for you. I hope this helped. Let me know if you need me and hang in there. We're gonna make it. And if I don't see you online, wait for Cantare Italiano to come out in English very, very, very soon.